Check it out, YouTube. We got the FMS PC21 Pilatus. This thing is freaking cool. Uh, a little weird to fly on this runway, as you can see, as we pan left and right, looking at the condition of this runway. At this time of year, it ain't all that great because the, uh, well, it's an airport and everything, basically a name only. So, you know, if, but if it's good enough for full scale traffic, it's probably good enough for us, except for the fact that the propeller tips are slightly tinted green because it's been mowing the grass out here as it flies. It's got, it sits very low to the ground with that five blade prop, which looks super sweet. It actually flies really well. I have heard this thing flies neutrally where it's balanced with the battery sitting in the center of the plane. Um, I don't know if I can really confirm that because when I go upside down, it immediately nose dives like that, which is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But then when you throw it to the, uh, throw the sticks into the corners and whatnot, the thing will actually do a quick knife edge spin. So it's one of those odd short coupled airframes, it feels like where it kind of flies strange. I'm gonna put the CG back where I had it earlier because it was flying pretty good. It's just gotta be kind of careful when you're throwing the sticks around. We are flying with an SMC four cell lithium high voltage pack 3600 if i didn't mention that already sitting in the center of the plane right about here gives you an idea where you're using a spectrum 8360t receiver with as3x i can give you guys my as3x gains and everything in the info that will pop up on the screen in no point or some point here in a moment uh let's go ahead and get her taxied around get ready to go all right so you can see the the issues we have with this plane watch as it as it goes here cut so if you have a low grass field, uh, probably not the kind of plane you're going to want to fly. Did have a fellow on Discord who asked me to fly this plane, who asked me to ask FMS to send it to us. So I'm glad that we can finally get that out for him. Lord Du Nord, if I recall his name correctly. Sorry if I can't remember everything on the channel. I have so much stuff to keep track of in my brain. Uh, but Lord Du Nord, that's his name. So if you guys are on Discord and you want me to shout you out on the channel, well, give me a plane request and I'll see what I can do for you. If I recall correctly, he is going to be making a Two Brothers inspired scheme for the PC-21. So hopefully we'll get to see that, maybe even feature it. All right, let's get the flaps in. We're gonna turn it around, face into the wind. So we're gonna start down this way. As you can see, uh, the ground clearance is not all that great, but you know, some planes aren't designed to fly from grass. If you're gonna fly this off grass, I'd say look for a dirt patch. All right, coming in, throttling up. We've already flown it. This is the second flight. We did our testing, make sure everything would fly well on the initial run. It is not the fastest thing in the world. And if you go sticks to the top inward, it does do a quick knife edge style spin. I actually had it on cam. I'm almost positive when I go sticks to the top left that it did a quick uh, somersault in the sky. So top left. Well, well it did a quick flat spin. <laughs> Uh, overall, it flies pretty good, but here's what I talk about when I go upside down with no gyro. See how it kind of pitches down severely? But it has so much pitch authority that it's definitely where it should be balanced, except the plane is not flying level or going up. It's going down, so it's a very strange little airframe. It flies pretty good, as long as you don't go upside down and try to do any crazy stuff. See how it handles knife edge? Oh, it's starting to climb with full rudder input. Look at that thing go, woo! Almost no coupling at all. It did have some coupling, but it wasn't too bad to, to speak of. Let's show you guys what some touch and goes look like. Get the gear out. We are on gear-based rates, so the rates are 67% uh, when the gear out, 100% when the gear up, but that's 100% and 67% of 150%. So that translates to 100 and 150% respectively. Should have all the info on the screen in the beginning so you guys can see what to expect. Doing my best to avoid the patches of grass. No doubt when I post this on YouTube later, we're gonna get a ton of comments if this thing goes viral, which it always does uh, for some of these videos where people will be like, man, that runway sucks. And I'm like, I think one of my comments is, are you volunteering to come out and clean it? Because this is a 3,000 foot runway and we don't own it, so we work with what we can work with here. It, it takes a lot of time to come out here, and a lot of manual labor to clean up runway this big. 40 foot by 3,000 foot. Look at how well that thing lands though, man. I almost want to move to the taxiways at this point because the sun has moved such a way that we are in the sun no matter what we do, so we might as well just be on the better part of the pavement. But we're already here, so let's just make use of what we got. We are landing with the wind, but it's very slight. I think we'll be okay. No, going him in too fast. 
Those of you guys who don't know why you don't want to land with the wind, one of the major reasons is that the wind air, or the speed of the wind is added to the speed of the plane. So when you're traveling with the wind, if the wind is 20 miles an hour and the plane is going 35, you are gonna land at 55 miles an hour. The wheels probably can't handle that. So something you might wanna consider. Wheelie it, look at that. <laughs> Once it starts hitting that grass, man, all hell could breaks loose. I was able to throttle it out. Bring it in from one more touch and go. Holding the gear in. All the flaps in, there we go. I think we got it this time. Not half bad. It's definitely, again, not a plane you want to fly off grass. And it is unfortunate that the only place we did have to fly at the moment was over here. Um, we are normally on the opposite side of the runway. But the plane tracks really true and straight with the AS3X settings that we're using. I'm going to turn off the gyro entirely. So we're flying with the gyro off right now. You can tell by the way the plane is not automatically stabilizing itself. You can tell what the, what the way the roll is. Uh, I have it on a slider so I can enable it or disable it at will. It is definitely a little touchy on the pitch axis for sure. It's flying like it's neutral, but it doesn't really have the characteristics of a neutrally balanced plane, meaning that it's not like keeping its um, the same attitude you give it every time you tell it to go somewhere. Yeah, I don't really like flying neutrally balanced planes without a gyro, so I'm going to turn it back on. Now it's on. Not much of a difference. It's very slight, mostly in the pitch. Uh, the roll is very ineffective. I don't have ro much roll at all on it. We're going to bring it in low right in front of us. Full flaps. Yeah, the, one of the, the benefits of flying at this time of day is that you actually get a shadow on the plane as opposed to when we normally fly. So you can see how low the plane is actually getting. We've got plenty of power left on this 3600 pack. I feel like we could do 2800s and get it even like lighter. Might even fly a little bit better. Let's get it low and slow again. Almost scraped a wing that time around. Is it just me or is there a piece of grass attached to that rudder? There is. There's a piece of grass in the rudder's uh, balance horn. That's funny. <laughs> Let's go ahead and land it and get that out of the way real quick. Because that's actually going to bug me real bad. And it's probably affecting the way the plane flies. Because anything that affects the shape of the plane is going to affect how it flies. If it's got any mass to it or any ability to disturb the airflow. Yeah, there's a piece of grass. Absolutely. Taking, a, taking for a ride. I bet that when that grass was created, there was no designs whatsoever for it to fly. And it did. Oh, we had a rock out there too, and the plane's still going. It somehow did not hit the prop. All right, let's get that piece of grass out of the balance horn. Look at this thing. That's a big piece of grass. <laughs> All right, how much power? 15.73 volts. We're going to send it. You know what? I think it'll high alpha too, just based on how it took off there. Let's give it a shot. We're going to go up nice and no, not too high. I think we've got enough power to get out of it. Nope. Maybe with the flaps it will. Drop the flaps. No, nope. pull the flaps up. Okay, so high alpha is a pipe dream. All right, it looked like it would high alpha though. Maybe because I only gave it a little bit of elevator input. Kind of like this. Okay, if I'm not pulling the elevator too much, it'll actually hold itself up, but then it starts to wing rock. So you can get limited high alpha, but we didn't try inverted high alpha yet. So let's see if it'll do that. I know you scale aficionados are out there, you know, losing your, your mind over this. Okay, it backflipped over itself. Cool. Some of these planes just will not do it, and that's okay. That's just how it is. It does do really what nice knife edge. I'm literally holding the stick all the way right now. Only a slight bit of left aileron to compensate for the full right rudder. I have to admit, I like how stable it is coming in low like this. Look at this with the flaps. I almost want to keep it in like this. I think we can. As long as I keep the thrust up, I think we'll be okay. Look how slow this thing can go. This is super cool, man. I think I found one of the specialties of this plane. I know like the full scale is designed for like crazy aerobatics and stuff, but as we begin to bank it, we need to uh, keep that thrust in so we don't drop the wing and crash. Uh, oh, I like that. I like when I can do that. Did you catch that, dear? That was butter. That was butter. 
Q Swiss uh, 007 or 001, whatever his name is, the butter song. We're gonna pick the gear up, we're gonna drop the flaps again, we're gonna bring it in, land it for the final go, just the way we did a second ago. Oh, I love when I can like drop the gear right before something lands. And it drifts too on the ground. Interesting little airframe so far, guys. Like this is, I'm not gonna tell you this is like my cup of tea because it is a little weird. I have to adjust my flying style to kind of appreciate what it is. I'm gonna pop my collar real quick while we're, while we're talking because the back of my neck is getting completely burnt. So I'm gonna look like a, a dude bro here for a sec. Here we go. I look completely ridiculous and I know it, but I don't care. I need the sunscreen right now. Um, yeah, first initial impressions on the first pack, not too bad. My wife has this goofy grin on her face looking at how stupid I look, but I don't care. I'm trying not to get sunburned. I, my, my dumb ass did not put on sunscreen and I'm literally underneath this North Carolina sun and I'm getting cooked to a crisp. And I have to go fly tomorrow and Sunday too and I don't want to look like a raisin when I'm out there. So we're going to go ahead and pop into the battery and pump right back. All right, we actually had a quick flight. The GoPro overheated, so I had to swap batteries. Hopefully it will uh, stay cool enough to finish this recording. We're going to go ahead and send it this direction. Here we go. Pretty good at this center of gravity, I have to admit, man. It's not the most balanced airframe in the world, though, but it does fly pretty good. Again, one of these planes that we do recommend flying with a gyro because if you get the battery back to where other people have recommended it or where we're recommending that you'll fly it, uh, it is definitely a little on the weird side, especially when you go up and you stick smash because when you do that, that's when the plane gets into those situations you might not be able to get out of easily. If you're up like here and you go top left, isn't that weird? Now it does hover. Uh, you guys need to see that real quick. It's uh, terrible hovering, but it does do it. Momentarily hovers. It's got enough thrust to do it real quick. Let's see what it does when we're full speed rolling, sticks in. That was kind of cool, but still not something I'd want to do low to the ground because there's no way you could get out of that. Even if you're the best pilot in the world, I think you'd have a hard time recovering from that. Let's uh, bring her around, drop full flaps. Let the wind kind of guide it in a little bit. <laughs> did a great job destroying that piece of grass that was there. I guess that's one less piece to worry about. I can't, did you get that zoomed in, dear? Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Okay, cool. I can't wait to see what that explosion looks like. So you can use this thing to uh, mow your grass if you really wanted to. Um, not something I would recommend doing. Can I get you to move up to the runway, dear? Uh, yeah. Thank you. So I'm asking her to move to the runway because I'm trying to get some good shots of the plane coming in and from the direction that I'm at, very good chance that I'm gonna get in the frame. There we go, that's why I did that. So we had a nice bit of landing that wasn't with my booty in the way top left oh i love when it does that weird knife edge spin thing it's got a pretty big horizontal stabilizer and elevator tips uh, but it is a little weird again the way it kind of comes out of those maneuvers and does knife edge spins it's something something you would normally expect from a plane like this i don't think we even touched the nose wheel that time around now, I do need to mention that I did replace the, the wheels. Uh, you don't need to do this. I just don't like the way the stock FMS wheels sound. So I put some low bounce or some Dubro rubber wheels in the back. They're not low bounce, they're something else. They're like not exactly low bounce, but they're not exactly not low bounce either. But I did put a low bounce 1.75 inch wheel on the nose wheel. And that definitely made a big difference in how it sounds for sure. Got the next one. <laughs> I'm not really trying to hit them. It's just like, you know, the, the plane getting hit by shifting winds and whatnot is definitely making it different. We're gonna do that landing one more time. See if we can get it to be nice and like slow, a little bit better this time around. We're gonna go further out so we don't actually have to worry about hitting those pieces of grass that are there. All right, pulling the flaps in, getting it nice and low. We're gonna level it out and drop the gear. I bet she got that one really good too. That was probably the best one of them all, just because I actually timed it correctly instead of dropping the gear too early. Going vertical, pulling them all the way back. You can see the 
plane stalls out as we try to push it over the edge. Top left. There's the, the uh, what do you call it? The, uh, what is that thing called? A cartwheel. That's super cool. I wasn't expecting me to pull that off. The P-51 from FMS, the 1700 can do that too if you go top left like this. That time around I couldn't get it. It just has to be at a precise angle. But yeah, overall the plane handles pretty good. It's just, again, a weird platform. The, the way, like the long snoot, the mid wing, uh, definitely feels kind of short coupled the way it flies. And that's okay, you know, not every plane's gonna be like the dream machine. Some of them can fly really well. This one does exceptionally well with flaps going slow. It's gonna come back and bite me, especially with this wind, but I don't care. We're gonna fly it with nice and low here. I mean, you can actually get away with that too because the prop is uh, in line with the fuselage pretty well, even if it is kind of big. We turn it around, drop the flaps again. We just stalled the wing, pulling it too hard. Get it a little lower. Got some wind shear to contend with. It's about as high, low as I feel like going. If I go any lower, if it gets into any kind of a sinking condition, it's going to crash and I'm not gonna break it on camera, at least not today. Let's do a quick barrel roll, see what that looks like. I always love a good barrel roll. Those always look good. Snap roll. It does really good snap. Look at that. Wow, I got four in a row without it going crazy on me. How much power we got left? 15.25 volts. All right, we got enough for one high speed pass down the runway. You can see it getting hit by different wind currents and whatnot. All right, we should have enough power left to bring it in now. Now we are at about 15, 14-ish volts under load. Winds are really kicking up right now. You guys are probably hearing because I had to take the wind sock off of the GoPro. Not half bad, man. Let me go ahead and give you guys my thoughts on this plane. That was not a rock that I hit earlier, by the way. That was a piece of uh, leaf, it looks like. If it was a rock, I guess it would have destroyed the prop. So aside from being an amazing lawnmower, which it is, um, it's a pretty good little acro monster. You know, it's not really my cup of tea. I wouldn't personally have gone out and bought this. I think FMS sent it to me because I asked them to because I had a friend of mine who wanted me to show what it could do for them. This is not normally the kind of plane I fly, but when I get into planes that I'm not used to and I'm not expecting to fly, I have to find out how to fly them correctly. I think that's when I find some cool stuff like bringing it in, dropping the gear right before it touches down. That kind of stuff you can do really good with this plane. Low and slow with the flaps is really cool. It is kind of short coupled, meaning it just kind of tends to not be all that controllable at least that's my understanding of it somebody will inevitably pop in and tell me how wrong i am that's okay feel free to tell me i, I can't wait to learn i actually do enjoy learning even if i am wrong it's kind of the only way you can learn is when you're wrong about something right uh control surfaces are great again we are using uh dubro wheels on here these are treaded lightweight wheels so they're tl wheels so two inch wheels in the back a 1.75 inch lightweight um suit what do you call that thing a low bounce wheel on the, on the front of the the plane Overall, does fly pretty good. I tend to prefer planes that I can do high alpha with and other kind of maneuvers, but I can still get some cool stuff out of this, and that is ultimately what matters, showing what it can do, what you guys can reasonably expect to get out of it. Um, you get pretty decent flight times out of it. Let's look at the screen again over here and see what our actual flight time was. Uh, well, I didn't, re I didn't finish uh, or clear the timer from last time, but in total, 13 minutes and 37 seconds between two 3600 packs ain't half bad. For a prop, that's one of the reasons why props are so good. You get a lot of efficiency out of them. You can fly them for a very long time compared to a jet. I probably would have gotten seven minutes out of a, uh, an equivalent jet similar to this one, like the, uh, the Hawk that FMS makes with the same paint scheme. Anyway, appreciate you guys uh, watching to give you the two bro score for this thing. I'd say it's about an eight and a half. I don't like the, the wheels that they're actually very, uh, there's no suspension to this at all, which is one of the reasons why I did opt to replace the wheels to make them a little bit less rough on the airframe. I do like that they come in and out really fast. I don't like how loud they are. Let's see if I can get this without smashing my fingers. Very loud, but very fast. The uh, flaps are great. They are actually in a little pocket back there. They're hinged on, on foam. Everything on this plane is hinged on foam. Kind of what you expect at this price point. Nothing uh, too surprising there. The um, control surface authority is pretty good. It does track really well. If you're planning to do normal sport flying, if you're trying to do 3D stuff, don't even consider it. It's not the kind of plane that you're gonna to wanna to do that with. Uh, but for those kind of like 
drop the wheels right before you touch down stuff, absolutely butter for that. See you guys in the B-roll and any other flight characteristics you need to know about. The PC-21 is a fantastic little airplane, but it does function as an electric lawnmower, so keep that in mind if you fly off grass, because you'll want to find a dirt patch to use as a runway, or mow at the lowest settings possible, otherwise you're going to end up eating grass. Takeoff and landings are both pretty easy, and so we're touch and goes. The entire flight experience on this model is relatively stress-free. Like any aircraft, you'll want to keep power in while you're banking and holding altitude to avoid the dreaded so-called tip stall, where one of the wings loses lift. This is good practice for any aircraft. Overall, it flies pretty good, and we think you'll enjoy it. And if you want one, you can pick it up via the link in the description. Use the code referral 2 brosrc for 10% off your first order, or 2 brosrc for $10 off an order of $100 or more. That should help make this plane a little bit more affordable. Let us know if you fly it. Join us on Discord and share your flying with us. See you next time with a new upload.